In this video, we will look at some proofs for the compound angle formulas. And we're going to start with our cos compound angle formula. We will prove that cos of a minus b is equal to cos a times cos b plus sine a times sine b. And it's going to use your knowledge of two prior things, cosine law, and the distance or length of a line segment given two endpoints. So let's start with cosine law. We're going to use the following unit circle. This terminal arm represents angle B from the positive x-axis to this arm. That's angle B. Then I have another terminal arm here in quadrant 2, and this entire angle will be angle A. And you will see that these two terminal arms, if we connect them, they form a triangle. And in this triangle, the side lengths here and here are both one, because that is the length from the center of the circle to a point on the circumference. And because this is a unit circle, the radius is one. So those two line segments represent the radius. The angle inside the triangle is the total angle A subtract this little outside angle, so A subtract B. So I'm going to use this triangle, the fact that these two sides are equal to 1, the fact that this angle is A minus B, and I've just labeled this side length here as C. So let's do some cosine law. And first, just a refresher of what cosine law looks like c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. a and b are those side lengths of 1, and angle c is that a minus b portion. So we have c squared equals 1 squared plus 1 squared minus 2 times 1 times 1 times cos of a minus b. Now I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. 1 squared plus 1 squared is just 1 plus 1, which is 2. And then 2 times 1 times 1 is 2 times cos A minus B. And remember that this 2 is attached to the cos A minus B with multiplication, so you can't do 2 minus 2. That is not okay. But that's as far as we can go here. So now let's use another skill. Let's use our distance formula. And here's our distance formula. Distance equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. This is a distance formula that you would have seen in grade 10. If you're given two coordinates, we labeled them x1, y1, x2, y2, and then we can do the distance formula to find that length. Now, my line segment C, its endpoints are right here. Now we need to do a little refresher about the unit circle. So I'm just going to draw a little triangle on the side, and I'm going to label this coordinate as x, y. If that's my coordinate, then this bottom length is x, and this vertical length is y. And I'll just assume this is a unit circle because I'm making it. So the hypotenuse is 1 because that would represent the radius if that terminal arm was swinging around. Now, if I were to write a ratio for sine, and let's just say this is angle theta. Sine theta would equal the opposite length, and opposite to theta is y over the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is 1. That means that the y-coordinate is just equal to sine theta, where theta is the angle um, for that terminal arm. I can do the same thing for cos. Cos theta equals adjacent is x, hypotenuse is 1. Well, that's just cos theta equals x. So there we are. So now let's look at the two coordinates. This coordinate here is on the terminal arm formed by angle B. So the X coordinate can be written as cos B and the Y coordinate sine B. This 
point here is on the terminal arm of angle A. So this coordinate is cos A comma sine A. And these two coordinates are giving us our x1, y1, x2, y2 for the distance. So now let's put it together. The distance is equal to cos A minus cos B all squared plus sine A minus sine B all squared. Let's clean this up. So I have that bracket squared, which means I can rewrite this as cos A minus cos B times itself. That way I can do some distributive property. And I'll do the same for the other one. And now let's distribute. So I have cos A times cos A is cos squared A. Cos A times cos B times negative cos B will be negative cos A cos B. Negative cos B times cos A, remember the order that you multiply things in doesn't matter. So I'm just going to write it as cos A cos B so that it looks like the other one. And then negative cos B times negative cos B is positive cos squared B. And then we can do the same thing for the other one. Sine A times sine A is sine squared A. Sine A times negative sine B is negative sine A sine B. Same thing when we do negative sine B times sine A. And finally, negative sine B times negative sine B is positive sine squared B. Let's continue cleaning up. And actually, writing that square root is getting a little bit annoying. So while I collect like terms here, I'm going to raise both sides to the power of 2. And actually, I should have done this earlier, but I'm going to take the, the distance, the d value I put, and use c instead. Because that's what we labeled that length. So c squared equals the rest. And now when I square both sides, the square root is gone on the right side. And I'm just going to collect here. So we have cos squared A, and I have two of these, and then I have two of these to collect. I do also notice that a cos squared A can be added with a sine squared A, and then a cos squared B can be added with a sine squared B if I think of that Pythagorean idea, identity. So I'm just going to put them beside each other. And I'll put the cos squared b beside the sine squared b, and then collect my last terms. And now, cos squared a plus sine squared a is 1. Cos squared b plus sine squared b is also 1. So that's 2 in total. So this is what we have so far, and that's as far as I can simplify. Now, this is what c squared is equal to, and this is also what c squared is equal to from my cosine law. If both of those expressions are equal to c squared, then I can set those two expressions equal to each other and see what happens. So I have 2 minus 2 cos a minus b from the cosine law equals 2 minus 2 cos a cos b minus 2 sine a sine b from the distance formula. And now, let's clean up a little bit. Well, first of all, if I were to bring this 2 over to the other side, it'd become negative, and 2 minus 2 would cancel out. So those are gone. So then we're just left with negative 2 cos of a minus b equals negative 2 cos a cos b minus 2 sine a sine b. And you can probably notice that they all have that negative 2 in common. So let's divide both sides by negative 2. And that gives us 
our first compound angle formula. So when we divide by negative 2, this will become cos A cos B. And when we divide the last term by negative 2, two negatives turn positive. And here we are. And now that we have this formula, we can also find the compound ang angle formula when it's about the sum. So if we know this is true, and I want to figure out cos a plus b, I can write it as a subtraction. So I can rewrite this as cos of a subtract negative b. This is true because two negatives make a positive, so they're equivalent. But me writing this as an angle means I can use my compound angle formula from before. So the formula says cos A, so cos A times cos B, but our angle B is negative B. So that would be cos of negative B plus sine A sine negative B. And now we should know what cos negative B and sine negative B are equal to. Think about the base function. Let's say the first cycle of cos. It looks like this. If I have a negative in front of my angle, that implies that there is a reflection over the y-axis, a horizontal reflection. So when this reflects, it will look like this. Well, that just looks like a continuous cos function. Reflecting over the y-axis does not do anything for cos. So that means cos of negative b is the exact same as cos of positive b. Let's see if the same is true for sine. So I'll start with my regular sine function. And if I reflect it over the y-axis, it will look like this. This is not the same. But if I were to continue this reflected one, just going forwards, this is what we would have. So reflecting over the y-axis is the same as reflecting over the x-axis. So we can say that sine of negative b, or any variable, is equal to negative sine b. So whether you're reflecting horizontally or vertically, sine will look the same. So I'm going to make that change. And then you have a positive times a negative, and there's your simplified compound angle formula for the sum of two angles. So now let's move on to a proof for sine. Our sine proof will require our knowledge of co-function or co-related identities. So with that in mind, I'm just going to refresh. If I have sine theta, that's equivalent to cos of pi over 2 minus theta. So let's apply that to a compound angle formula. So this sine a plus b is the same as cos of pi over 2 subtract our angle. But our angle isn't a nice theta. Our angle is a plus b. Okay, let's clean this up a little bit. I'm going to distribute the negative in. So cos of pi over 2 minus a minus b. Okay, now I want to relate this to a compound angle formula, but a compound angle formula is only the sum or difference of two angles. So I'm going to say this is angle 1 and b is angle 2. So now let's use our cosine compound angle formula that we just derived. And that formula said if you're subtracting two angles, you want to do cos a cos b and add it to sine a sine b. So that's what we're going to do. But for a, we're going to use pi over 2 minus a. And for b, well, for b, we're going to use b. So let's see what that looks like. Cos 
of pi over 2 minus a times cos of b plus sine of pi over 2 minus a and sine of b. Well, I have another two correlated identities here. Cos of pi over 2 minus a is equivalent to sine a, this property right here. So I'll clean that up. And then sine of pi over 2a, well, that's equivalent to cos a. And that's just because if sine theta equals cos pi over 2 minus theta, then cos theta should be equivalent to sine pi over 2 minus theta. And there we go. There's our first compound angle formula for sine. And we can do the exact same thing for the difference version. So sine a minus b equals cos pi over 2 minus a minus b. And feel free to pause the video and try it out on your own if you'd like. So I'm going to distribute that negative in. And this time when I distribute the negative into the b, we have two negatives. So we have positive there. And I'm going to split up my angles. Cos pi over 2 minus a times cos b. And this is the sum compound angle formula. So it's going to be minus sine of pi over 2 minus a and sine b. And now we have those correlated identities. So this is sine a and this is cos a. And there we are, our fourth compound angle formula. And the final proof is for tan. And I'm just going to do the tan x plus y. And for this, I'm going to go back to my quotient identity. Tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. So that means if I'm looking for tan of x plus y, it's going to be equivalent to sine of x plus y over cos of x plus y. And we just proved our compound angle formulas for sine and cos. So let's use them. Sine x plus y is equal to sine x cos y plus cos x sine y all over. The cos compound angle formula is cos x cos y minus sine x sine y. And now if I'm trying to get this in terms of tan, it might be a good idea for me to divide everything in this fraction by cos x and cos y. And you'll see what that does for us. So I'm going to take this first one and divide by cos x cos y. Then I'll take the next and I'm going to divide it by cos x cos y all over, same thing on the bottom. And now let's see what is going to clean up. Well, the cos y's cancel out, the cos x's cancel out, both of these cancel, and then nothing cancels. So what will this clean up to? Well, in the numerator, we're going to be left with sine x over cos x. Well, that's just tan x. Plus, we're left with sine y over cos y. That's just tan y. Then, this full fraction canceled out, but it didn't turn into 0. Anything divided by itself is 1. Minus, and then sine x over cos x is tan x. Sine y over cos y is tan y. And there's our identity. And we could do this exact same thing if it were the subtraction version. And that's it for proving all of our compound angle formulas.